I'm watching my hollow point making some gumbo and I've never made any gumbo before so I figured I'd give it a shot based on my hollow points recipe here. Now, I'm not going to follow it exactly the same. I'm going to change it up a little bit. But, uh, you know, that you guys come along for the ride, see how it turns out. So, if uh, I'm going to put a, a full recipe description down at the bottom, ingredients and stuff like that. If you really want to know <laughs> how to do it right, uh, watch my hollow point. But I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to see what I can do, see if I don't screw it up too bad. So I'm going to put a little bacon grease in the pot there, get it, get it started. Because who doesn't love bacon, right? And then while that's while that's warming up, I am put this here. I am going to put in the first things. First thing he puts in, and again the ingredient list is down at the bottom. I pre-cut everything to save time. But I got my celery, my white onion and my green onions and I got a little parsley left over from when I was cutting parsley. So I'm just going to dump that in. Holy smoly, that's a lot. But while that's going, what I'm going to do is show you a couple of things real quick. Um, when you're cooking, it's, it's a good idea to, if you're going to do a lot of cooking, it's a good idea to get a good knife. And what I've got here is a it's called a Wustop knife. I don't know if you can see that. Let that focus in. This was a gift, but I tell you, it's it's made a big difference to have a good knife when you're cooking in the kitchen. Just just the one knife. It's well worth the money if you had to buy it yourself. Now, the tip I'm going to show you is how to how to this shell the garlic. Now, there's a lot of cooking shows out there that show you, but uh, since we're using garlic in this recipe, I'm going to show you how to get the shell off. Uh, I know some people have kind of spent a lot of time peeling the skin off, but uh, there's a really easy way to do it if you haven't already seen it. What you do is you just pull it off the main bulb, get the one piece here, and what I do is I go ahead and cut the, the root part off. Like that and then instead of trying to peel the skin off see how it's kind of hard to peel and it just kind of flakes off on you you can kind of do it that way but the faster way to do it is to put it down get your good knife place the knife flat on the garlic and then just give it a little smack and voila it comes right off so now, what I'm going to do is I'm going to slice this garlic up. And I'm not a chef, but you see the chefs do it. They, they kind of hold, hold the garlic with their knuckles down. And, and the reason why you have a big knife like this is you let the knife glide over your knuckles so you're not, not cutting your skin. If you, if you hold it like that, there's a good chance you'll, you'll chop a finger off. But let me see this angle here. If you hold it like this, um, you can let the, the knife ride on your knuckle so you don't so you don't cut your fingertips off. So, um, and the other thing too, uh, let me back it up a little bit. The other thing is you want to use the back of the knife. Uh, the front of the knife is is nice when you're doing a lot of slicing, uh, a lot of this motion but to, to chop you want to use the back of the knife and again I'm not a chef I've just seen people do it on TV and it, and it seems to make sense to me but you hold it like that and you let the back of the knife kind of do the work so you let it right against your knuckles and you just rock it back and forth just like that save your fingers saves time And I'm not going to put these in right away. I'm going to wait till the uh, till the celery and stuff cooks down a little bit more. 
Okay, I messed up already. He put a, the andouille in first, and he doesn't use any vegetable oil. Um, but for some reason, I thought he had put some vegetable oil on there. But no, he put the andouille in first. So what I'm going to do is I'm just going to kind of clear me a spot here and put a few andouille in there. I've got some leftover chicken too, so I'm just gonna kind of fake it and just scoop some andouille in there. And then let that let that work its magic for a while. And what he mentions in his video is he's going to if, if he had fresh okra he would saute it in some oil first, so I'm going to do that next. But also, he said he's he's going to use chicken stock. Well, I didn't buy any chicken stock. What I'm going to do is I'm going to use some chicken bouillon. And this is one teaspoon per cup of water. So I'll measure that out and get this heated up. And he also added his bay leaves when he put his vegetables in there. So I'm going to put my... He puts one, but I've got a lot of stuff, so I'm going to throw a bay leaf in, a couple of bay leaves in there. Throw that around a little bit. Oh yeah, that andouille is starting to smell pretty good. Let me show you the package. Now it says, it, it's spelled andouille sausage, but it's pronounced andouille. And I live in a place where they have this, so I don't have to substitute for something else, but I just got got that from my local grocery store there. All right, time to chop the okra up. Now, <laughs> I had this in the fridge for a couple of days, and it doesn't look too good, but it's uh, it's still it's still pretty good. Let me rinse it off a little bit. Let's see the chicken stock's looking nice and mixed there. So now that this is wilted down nicely, I'm going to put my one cup of chicken stock. Now, if I need more, I'll go ahead and add more, but I'll keep that going. I'll let that cook down a bit. Looks like it might lean a little more, but uh, when these vegetables cook down, it, it'll uh, I'm sure it'll look a little better. All right, back to the okra. Now, okra, uh, traditionally, they, they slice them in about half-inch chunks here. So that's, that's about the size of chunks you want. I'm going to put them in just this tub here until I get them all. I added another cup of chicken stock to the the gumbo mixture here. Uh, it looked like it was kind of low, so I added another cup, see how that works, and keep that going. So now what I'm gonna do, I've got all the all the okra chopped up. I'm going to saute it, and I'm not gonna add it right away either. I'm just gonna saute it first, and then let it sit to get the sliminess out of it, like Hollow Point said. And by the way, this is not as easy as it looks to, uh, anybody can follow directions and anybody can cook, but to, to try to follow somebody else's recipe for the first time and cook and try to film it, it's, it's not as easy as you think it is. So I'm doing my best and just hope you guys are enjoying the ride. I'm gonna put a little, a little garlic in there just to spruce it up a little. I don't know if I'm supposed to do that or not. It's been about five minutes and I screwed up again. I was supposed to put the garlic in the gumbo shortly after the uh, the vegetables had time to, to wilt down. So I'm just going to put a little bit in here. I'm going to put the rest in the okra. The okra has been simmering for about five, eight minutes. And it's starting to de-slime a little bit. You can still see a little bit of slime in there. But I like garlic, so I'm going to saute it with the garlic and a little bacon grease. 
And then also, I was supposed to put the roux in here too. So I'm gonna let that mix. And I did put another cup, yet another cup. So we're up to three cups of chicken bouillon, or chicken stock. And it doesn't look anything like what he's got, but this is my version, so you don't have to eat it. I'm the one that's gotta suffer through it if I screw it up, so. Let's see here. Oop, missed one. All right, now I gotta put the roux in, or Roux. Now I don't have any Richards, but I do have Carries. I don't know if that's the right way to pronounce that or not. Uh, maybe Hollow Point can tell me how to pronounce that Carries or Carries, maybe. I don't know. But this is the roux, and he said about a half a cup, so I'm just gonna kind of dig it out of there. It's got like a, uh, a layer of, it smells like bacon grease on top. It's got a layer, so I don't know if I'm supposed to mix that up or not, but I'm going to get me about a half a cup. Oh boy, it sure is mud. And I'll put a link to my Hollow Points Gumbo video at the bottom of mine, because he's definitely done it a few more times than I have. And what do I know? All right, so oregano. I don't know, I, I don't know how to call how much it is. Oh, oregano right lot. there. So I'll put my oregano in. And I'll begin putting it in there. And I will, this is black pepper. Got a whole lot. Okay. This is white pepper. Black pepper. Damn sure don't want to put a whole lot of this. You won't be able to eat it. Just a dusting. I don't have any white pepper, so I'm going to skip the white pepper. I'm going to put a little parsley in there. Okay, he said cayenne pepper. Get some cayenne pepper there. I'm not going to put a whole lot of that either. Just kind of. I'm going to put a little bit there. of thyme in there. Don't have any time, but I've got some of this zesty stuff that's got time in it. Put a little bit of garlic salt in there. Since I've got a lot of garlic in there, I'm not I'm gonna skip the garlic salt too. But I do have some Tonys. So with the fresh garlic, I'm gonna put a little bit of Tonys in there. I'll be testing this. It's been about five minutes. I turned the heat down. I did add a cup of water to the to the gumbo mixture, and it does taste pretty good. So I have another taste before I put in the tomatoes and stuff. Yeah, that's pretty good. It's been a while since I had gumbo, but that tastes like what I remember gumbo tasting like. Uh, I'm probably not doing something exactly right. It's got a little little touch of bitter to it, not not overpowering, but, but you can taste it towards the end there. I think that's the roux, but uh, I just mix that up. Now what I did, since I you saw I have the fresh okra, I'll go ahead and add that in there with the garlic and stuff. Stir that around, and I've got Know, probably too much parsley, but I got parsley and I've got tomatoes that I chopped up earlier. And I'll put those in there. And I think the tomatoes might help reduce the bitterness a little bit, even though it, it wasn't that overpowering in the first place. So now I'll just stir that in. Oh, and I forgot I do have shrimp to go in there. are small shrimp they're pre-cooked so it is a good idea to wait till the end to put it in there and what I did was I just took some raw shrimp I blanched them 
that means just drop them in boiling water until they turn a little pink. That makes them easier to peel. And then um, you can finish your, your cooking at the end here. One thing I do want to tell you, my hollow point makes it look easy, but it's, it's a labor of love. I tell you, I spent probably about a good hour prepping all the veggies, and it's probably been an hour uh, with all this filming. And it's, it's looking pretty good. It smells pretty good, too. So if you decide you want to do this, uh, make sure you, you block off a, a good chunk of time to do it. And, and uh, there's a lot of cleaning involved, too, you, that you don't see behind the scenes. So what I'm going to do, I'm going to go ahead and turn it off and spoon me up some, some gumbo. All right, y'all. Soup's on. You see all the things got, floating I in it. A little bit of rice. And see, I got the okra in there. Got the sausage. Got a little bit of my leftover chicken. From what I gather from from having different kinds of gumbo, gumbo is is kind of like the poor man's soup or stone soup. If you ever heard that story, where it, it's basically leftover stew, and it's just kind of become. Uh, a, a dish in its own right after the, over the years of similar items being put into the mix. So I'm sure you can screw it up, but I'm, I'm sure there's a pretty a large error band of, of what gumbo is and what it's supposed to taste like. So I hope I did it justice. I don't know. This looks good to me. And where else better to enjoy this than the man cave? So let me relocate to the man cave and see what it tastes like. You know, there's nothing like eating a meal that you cooked yourself in your man cave. And uh, this sure looks like one of the better things I've made in my life. And taking uh, Hollow Point's advice, I'm going to put a little filet on there. I don't know how much, so I'm going to just kind of drizzle on there all right and I don't have any bread but I, I did put it on some rice and I'm gonna have it with some serrano peppers or as they say here in Texas serrano peppers and they got a good amount of heat in them but uh, yeah, just enough to uh, to spice things up so to speak so here we go thanks uh, mr. hollow point for or my hollow point for posting that video and uh, Hope, hope I did you justice. Mm. That is good. Yeah, man. Mm. Just right. Mm. Mm. Enjoy. See you later.